Hi everybody, my name is Wiro and I'll be producing a new show called Bonafide. In every new episode, we'll try to bring in a special guest who's had relative success in pursuing their goals, their passion and even their careers. We'll get them to share interesting life stories about themselves. With that, allow me to do a quick shout out to Batik who has allowed us to utilize their space for the recording of our show. Batik is the place for hip, trendy and fashionable Batik apparels. Be sure to check their website out at www.batique.sg or you can find them on their IG and Facebook at Batik underscore SG. Without further ado, allow me to introduce to you my first ever guest in my first ever episode. This gentleman right here, he has been on the receiving end of massive amount of media attention with regards to his halal Japanese cuisine. Arguably, the most good looking hawker in Tanjung Paga, he has joined the ranks of many young and successful hawkers in Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, come out. Thank you. Thank what you, up, thank you. Man? For uh, saying that I'm arguably the most handsome Yeah, indeed, indeed I mean, I believe Debatable la. It is, it is I mean, you've seen your neighbours, right? Uh, yes, yes So yeah. They're halfway through the bucket la, but Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> Hopefully We'll do a poll on that Anyway, Mal, how, how has it been? How has business been Ever since Circuit Breaker? Oh Business has been like a roller coaster It's been ups and downs Uh it was actually quite, quite, um, how do you say? Quite hard, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would be lying, or anyone with business yeah. would be lying if they say they're doing well. I can of attest course, to that, yeah. Of course, there will be different people like logistics, or yeah, they're yeah. all doing very well. But when it comes to food and F&B, food and beverages, uh, it's bad, right, bro? Some of you are, you are like in the central of Singapore. Yes. And at the point of time, everybody's working from home. Yes. Right? You're significantly decreased in the number of walk in people oh. from office and all right yeah. yeah i mean it's not only just the office people yeah but even if i had uh with my regulars yeah. from the the neighborhood yeah all of them are staying in oh yeah. yeah no but they are allowed to buy food but they decrease that activity as well yes yes i mean because of the paranoia is it especially because i think my area it's it's uh, quite a aged population yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so it's they are very conservative yeah so it's a bit hard lah but i don't know it was the moment they announced the circuit breaker right yeah everything went to shambles but good thing about about my business was that it was if i'm not wrong circuit breaker was announced two weeks or one week prior to ramadan yeah yeah so, yeah 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 so before Ramadan, I was I already had plans to roll out like island wide deliveries. Okay. So, uh, just a quick one. I'm doing. Uh, I'm with Matt Bros SG. Yeah. You can check it out at Matt Bros SG on yep. IG or Facebook. Yep. So, um, we do island wide deliveries. Okay. So at that time, before I roll out these island wide delivery services, mm -hmm. um, I was actually planning it to to how do you say um, help me with my business during Ramadan. Yeah. So because during Ramadan I didn't want to have a my I didn't want to continue with my normal working hours, so what I did was I I took the half day and then I tried to help I tried to do a service where before people break the fast yeah. I will deliver it. So the walk in timing you would tend to decrease yes and then you replace it with your delivery timing yes okay so that was the pre CB yeah. plan yeah. okay so that was my plan was to actually roll that service out during ramadan okay but when they announced the circuit breaker yeah um i just had to expedite the whole plan and then move it forward and yeah it went went smoothly i mean i got a quite a hot response yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you were there were quite a, no, a number of uh, like sharings on facebook as well with regards to you yeah, when you initiated yeah. some post right yes and then it gained a bit of traction yeah. right but how was it? Was it good enough? Um, good enough. I mean, it's it's. I don't say. I wouldn't want to say that it's good enough, lah. You know, it's more of. Uh, it could be better. Okay. But uh, the the reception was what I expected it. Okay. Uh, you were hopeful for a better outcome, but you were not disappointed by it. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
and yeah i was i was let's just say i was managing my expectations okay well i mean Correct. i, I Correct. don't like to uh Correct. have a too high an ambition but then overestimation yes, of, of it's not good man yeah. because you need to pick up if you fall too high yeah. you got to pick up yeah, from there correct. Eh? so when it's too high you fall harder right yes yeah. yes it's always it's then always how about condition. the uh, food delivery apps you have a few right i'm now with two two right yeah did it help uh it was consistent even pre covid oh okay so yeah in fact after covid and then after i roll up my island wide delivery yeah people just come straight to me i mean i can i can skip the commission why not yeah 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 but i mean you were charging slightly more yeah yeah right? you you are able to i'm right? not sure if you can say it out but yeah you are able to mark up so uh but then you know it's it all it's it boils down to the same same amount of price lah okay. ultimately lah yeah yeah so uh for the end end end, end user all boils down to this if you calculate everything is all amount, amount to the same price but yeah. to me with the platforms they they would take a huge chunk of it from are, the, are there a lot of hawkers in your area which are using like this food delivery apps um there are from what i see maybe maybe 10% of the all the the hawker population from my my place oh that's not a lot no but i i reckon right After the government rolled out like subsidies for food delivery, I'm sh- uh, I'm not sure if you heard, uh, hawkers would receive a grant of something uh, a certain amount. Yeah. Uh, and they would they would like um, receive a certain amount of money if they sign up for all this. Oh yes. Oh, there was. Yes. Oh, there was an incentive for that. Yes, uh, I got. Uh, I, but it w- it was five hundred dollars. Okay. So I think after that, a lot of people were signing it up, lah. Oh, I mean, it, it's been helpful. I mean, the, the government was actually helping. <laughs> Why are you laughing, man? <laughs> What's up, Why? the smoke, bro? Well, no, they are. They okay. are. They At are. that point of time, this is pre-election, right? This is this is well, it's almost post-election for me. Okay. Well, at least for okay. me, okay. I've, okay. I've done my voting. Okay, I have done my civic duty. Is that what you said? Yeah, civic it is. It is. Or it civic is. or it civil? Is. Uh, is this? Yeah. So uh, yeah, they get it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I've done my duty responsibly. Okay. So. Uh, yep, they have been helpful uh, in helping me to cut down all my losses. Yeah, tremendously. I cannot thank them. Um, <laughs> enough. <laughs> There's no propaganda shit here, right? No, no, okay. definitely not. Bro. Okay, okay. This is I mean, the, the, the election is done, right? In no way. So right? this would have come a bit too late if there was any propaganda to be done, right? Precisely. Right? I mean, okay. in no way would there be any. Political agenda in right. this. It is just fight, it is just a Singapore citizen yes. being grateful for whatever he has. Yes. Right. Very. Okay. Let's cherish whatever is good. Yes. Whatever is bad, we leave it to Facebook postings. Yes. No. No. It's not that. It's just me being content and grateful because I think in life, being grateful is the most important thing. Yeah. Indeed. To anyone. Indeed. I've seen that a lot in yeah. you. Yeah. Right. For all the characters, the colorful characters you oh. are, you are easily contented. You are not easily contented. Sorry, you are contented <laughs> with what Can you receive. Can you look at him, man? <laughs> how's his mic? How's easily contented? <laughs> how's his mic? Is it is his mic okay? Uh, he needs to be closer. Yeah, you need to be closer, bro. How you close do you want? You want me no, to you, give a blow no, job you, to this? You, you got to bring it in, man. Well, you got to bring it. Well, you got to bring it in. Because uh, Viru's voice is very loud. Okay. Yeah, you got to bring Can it in. Can you ask him to shut up when I'm talking, no, man? No, no, no. You got to bring it in. <laughs> bro, we we are rolling. So you got to bring it in. Bring it in. Right. Okay, I'm bringing okay. it in, man. Anyway, okay, I I want to ask you how how lucrative do you think this grab or uh, rather not grab food delivery apps are for hawkers especially because the profit margin for hawkers, right, and their super low pricing of their food mm-hmm. and their profit margins are low. I mean, you are a hawker yourself. Your profit margin is super low, and then you come in with this food delivery apps with one third of commission. Mm-hmm. But do you think it's a it's a it's a lucrative idea for hawkers to actually adopt this? I mean, first and foremost, I need to understand where you're getting at with your question. Okay. I mean, when you when you, when you say lucrative, um, lucrative in the sense of increasing their sales, their revenues. Okay, not in the sense of uh, branding or outreach. It's more of your daily revenue, mm-hmm. right? Is it a lucrative option for a hawker to consider? It does adds to your. It does add up to your sales. Proportionate. Your, 
to the work that sense. to the work that you're going to do so so for example your profit margin is x amount but you grab or rather sorry the food delivery apps are taking a significant chunk of your profit margin mm-hmm. to go to their platform right mm-hmm. so do you think whatever resources that you put in in producing those extra units are they proportionate mm-hmm. i mean i mean are they lucrative enough i mean if you're you're talking about just pure a uh, 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 straightforward does it help you with your profit of course if you, the maths wouldn't, wouldn't would say otherwise yep but if you're talking about um providing a service for the customers that whenever they want you want to be there because for me it's uh my business mad bros sg i want it to grow organically and it to become a household name you want to be in their face so whatever yes. platforms that they see yes it's your name yes ramen and it's your name yes okay uh, so you see that this this option contributes to that yes. that you're trying to achieve yes i mean um let's say for example uh you want something to eat and then mm-hmm. hey, the first thing the first thing that people would ask is it on the delivery platforms uh true i, w- I would say yes, they are yeah, yes. yeah 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 so yeah, yeah. so if they're not like oh man then we have to go there so i'm just giving them the option of the, if they can go if they they are if they, are, if they don't want to go out they can just order if they want to come mm-hmm. by all means you know i'm i would love to to chat with them because i'm very interactive with my customers yeah uh although of course when i'm busy i try i i don't have yeah, time yeah, yeah. but uh, every time when they ask me questions without without uh you know hesitation i would just talk to them you yeah. know i enjoy talking Correct. to people building the rapport yeah oh, that, definitely, definitely that's very really important yes yeah. so i think you know uh it's part of our service lah i mean we want to be part of the community this this japanese food because we have to understand that Japanese ramen yeah is actually a fast food. Oh is it? It's a fast food okay. in Japan. So it works in the same way how burgers are in the western yes. countries. Yes. Okay. So it's if you want a quick lunch or quick dinner, you go to to a ramen, eat and you move off. Move move on with your your, your oh, day. So okay, it's, okay, okay. It's supposed to be a fast food. So like any fast food, I want this 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 Japanese ramen to be fast and then when people come they enjoy they go about their normal life hassle free is kind yes. of a hassle free kind of meal yes. right okay. i i want to i want to talk i want to walk through that whole journey so okay we've been friends for the longest time mm. so i know that you actually came you were with quite a reputable hedge fund firm mm. right and uh, changi business hedge park hedge fund services firm. hedge fund services firm so you were in that for a good 2 3 years 3 Three years plus. I would say from the stories they tell me, it was relatively comfortable being mm-hmm. in that job. Yeah. What triggered the plunge over into the hawker scene? Um. I've always wanted to have a gig of my own. Okay. So um, I think back in uni, uh, I'm not sure if I shared this idea with you. Uh, I had this idea of having a like a a subway, a halal subway. Back then, su- hal- subway wasn't halal. Toasties wasn't th- in yet. It wasn't. In yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's like a subway because I've always liked uh, subs. I've always liked sandwiches. Mm-hmm. So um, I wanted to do that, but it was just all talk and no action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then along the way in uni as well, I talked to you about m- that time I was still uh, crazy about cycling. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I told you I want to do a tour. You know, go bring people somewhere. And then you see, it was a good idea. I, I told you it was brilliant. Yeah. I told you I give you one year. You're not gonna do it. Yeah. I'm gonna take it. Yeah. So, uh, I didn't do it as well. Yeah, yeah, you didn't. So, when when this ramen um came about, this idea came about. Uh, I dec- I decided lah. You know, only a stupid person right would repeat his mistakes. Time and time and time again. Yeah. So. So there was what five years later, six, uh, a good half a decade, seven, right? Seven. Seven years uh, later. Seven, seven, eight years later. Then I realized, you know, you gotta take a plunge. Uh. And when I took the plunge, it wasn't that wasn't just the only fact, lah. Yeah. I mean, um, I take my source of inspiration everywhere I can. Okay. And one of it was actually um, 
good friend of mine his his late father uh this this uh this is like in a setting sorry yeah, bro i don't want the audio quality to be okay yeah they'll be better uh, this, uh? yep okay uh? yeah. <laughs> so anyway um so this was in a setting like this you know we were talking yep. he was just lamenting on his lepak his, session yeah it was just a lepak session under the block having a cigarette and then um he was that time he was having a, a lot of problems and then uh, he wanted to do he was he was uh he was holding a normal job and then his dad told him to do law degree okay to to do his uh, uh what is it called uh? mbbs uh? you know that's i, I, no I don't know lah yeah, uh? okay. i think that's medicine uh, sorry to do Medicine. law lah basically yeah, to okay to do law to practice law okay so um Uh, he was having a lot of reservations about doing law. Yeah, I mean, he was from engineering background. Oh, okay. So the switch was actually quite sudden, abrupt. Then um, his dad said this to him, and he related to me like he said, in, "In life, ah, mm-hmm. sometimes you got to jump off the cliff first. The wings will come later." It's, I mean, if you hear right, it's like, "Wah, it's stupid, yeah." You can die, no, from that jump. True, true. Yeah, true. But what have you got to lose sometimes? Um, I mean, I Iker- mean Icarus jump with wings. I'm not sure. I, I think he died. It like. depends on the position, <laughs> the, the position that you are in life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see? So yeah, I figured. You know, I've got nothing to lose. Uh, But that it? resonated with you, lah. It resonated until now. Why would I be telling you if I can? True, if I true. Don't, you, this was. Eons ago, this was way before he was he he went abroad to study. So he eventually took the plunge. He oh. eventually jumped the cliff as well. Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. So yeah. He grew his wings now. Definitely, man. Oh. I think he grew another pair of wings. Brilliant story, bro. Okay. Yeah. And then with regards to your to your journey, what, what the, the 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 whole jump. Yeah. Of the so and then that that's one. So you know um. I told myself I just had to I just had to try lah, you know. It's impossible for me to know if it uh, if it's going to be successful if I don't try. Yeah. So and then I left my job. And then you But went then, on a sabbatical, was it? For a while? Yeah, which is in search of the knowledge, right? You went, right? If I'm not mistaken, you went for a good number of months just to in search of I mean, it was, it was everything lah. Uh, this, this, like you, the, what you so called mm. said. Excuse me, it, a sabbatical where um, not only in search on the business per se, but in search of your inner self. I mean, if I want to do that, I would have gone to Mecca, <laughs> 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 but uh, not there yet. Inshallah soon. But uh, yeah. Uh, Uh, so where do you go? I went to. What was your prep before Matt Bruce? What was the prep? Because I know you didn't go to. You already quit your job, and you didn't immediately started mm. Matt Bruce. There was this period of time, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That I don't know. You were soul searching, or you were searching for knowledge, or whatever. Mm-hmm. What, what 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 did you do? And I know just include that story whereby you go to Japan to study a bit of the cuisine as well. Studying the cuisine wasn't hard, wasn't wasn't easy. Yeah. yeah, it was actually quite hard. Um, but uh, thank God, I had a friend. Okay, to help me out with the process, and uh, it was it was actually helpful because I did not know this. But a few days ago, I actually was flipping through my phone with all the for my the pictures from my trip, and then I realized I actually made a blog. And when I came back, I list all this down. Okay. Uh, so, uh, a block uh, of a vlog, a video oh, log. Oh, okay. And uh, I was listening to it, and without me knowing, actually, right, all the things, all the methods that I've been using, was actually reflected in that vlog. But I cannot remember me watching again that vlog because I remembered just vlogging. Yeah. And then it just went to the storage. System. It was just an instinctive thing that yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. something that was consciously done. Yes, so um, uh, there was a lot of vlogs I read. Uh, I tell you, I so those was you you vlogged that fundamental journey that you had. Uh, 
for myself uh, yes yeah yeah, yeah yeah so i i i let's say for example i see someone doing I, i'm a i'm on a ramen for me i whatever i do if i go to a ramen stall or a ramen sh- restaurant i would vlog i would record and i would describe what i'm eating <laughs> and i'm the typical kind of singaporean now uh, when i go to a restaurant right i be i say one i would just go in i would like try and look around can mm. i see your kitchen poke your nose around uh. yeah i mean i think that's quite invasive in the japanese culture yeah, yeah. but uh to myself i mean you want a paise for what true true <laughs> true so okay lah unless they scold you you just you just do and then apologize later ah <laughs> yeah, but i mean you didn't get into trouble or anything right no you la, didn't offend no. anybody I mean, as well right um in japan all you have to do is just bow down as low as yeah. possible <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean i mean you're someone who pushes the perimeter but you rarely come across as offensive so oh, thank you but you do push the perimeters Especially with me as well, mm. so I enjoy I pushing a, people's I, buttons. I, I gotta uh. applaud you for that, lah. I mean, yeah. you you eventually, you know, you know, you know, there's the boiling point. You just stop one step shy of that. So yeah, but then how how did you actually learn the whole cuisine? Was it in Japan? Was it back? You come to Singapore. You speak to. It's everything. It it sums up from all my experience in Japan. Do you know how many times I cook ramen? How many times I I wasted gas at home? I reckon it was shitload of it. It was, it 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 comes it came to a point right that, um, I don't know if I should even do it. It's like ah uh, okay you know the R and D was yeah oh yeah bro I was there for your R and D right yeah yeah, yeah I yeah, mean yeah, you yeah. tasted the shit ones yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right 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 yeah so um from there you know I. I figured, you know, if after all this, yep. I I tasted a lot of ramen. I mean, tra- trust me, uh, I even accidentally tasted tonkatsu, bro. Tonkatsu is what? Sorry. Tonkatsu is babi, bro. Oh my god! But then, but you sure it was accidental, I mean, right? I I yes yes definitely because so I went there, I told them. Uh, Wait, why was this? Ah, huh? where Japan, was it? Japan. In Japan, okay. So, def- uh, a common loss in translation, I okay, would say. Okay, okay, okay. So what happened was um. When there and then it says the chicken ramen. All right. Would you think that's babi? Uh, I mean, okay lah. Okay. If you were to be super pantang ah, then of course lah. Okay. If you you go there chicken ramen and you you have this mentality, I need to try all the chicken ramen and trying to replicate that. Okay. So what happened was, uh, I went in. It was a it was a decent ramen chain. So my friend actually called a hit and said, okay, can I ask? Do is does your chicken ramen Include uh, pork, and th- there was that was the question. Uh. No loss in translation, right? Actually, no. Uh. Yeah, she, she spoke in Japanese. She okay. yeah, she's a local. Okay. So when she called in, they said, "Oh no, <laughs> don't have, don't have." Okay, fine. So when we came, uh, we asked again. The fella probably some part timer or what lah. Uh. It's like, oh no 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 no. Okay, fine, try. <laughs> uh, it was decent, but um, uh, I didn't. It wasn't to my liking because it was salty. I mean the. The thing that actually some of my customers now the first thing that they ask is is your ramen salty? So okay. yeah, back then it was it was actually quite salty, so I didn't like it. Okay. But it was the 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 texture, the in the intensity of the the flavor, the how do you say the creaminess? It was there. It's just that super salty. So uh, we ate the chasu was okay lah. It was pale. I don't yeah. like it lah. But um, it was good. And then uh, my friend wasn't happy. She was like, "This tastes weird because okay. it doesn't taste like chicken. chicken." So she searched and then she asked the chef inside. So the one we asked was actually the server. Okay. Then they say, "Oh yes, yes, we mix." <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> okay lah, you know these are the the sacrifices that I would make to help. Or to serve my customers. But now. I mean, you do your yeah. due diligence of, of course, like, repentance, I, I right? Try my best, <laughs> la, you know? And then, and then, yeah, there was there was a lot of I I went to a lot of restaurants. Uh, I think, yeah, no one would have eaten as much ramen as me in a day. Where in Japan? In Japan, man. Also, oh, it was man. basically every meal was ramen. Uh, no lah, I, I gain a lot of weight because it's not only just ramen. I would have all the the good stuff also lah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, but wouldn't that compromise your ability to 
assess what's a good ramen if you have too much of ramen uh the thing is my idea is not to get a good ramen is to get to have an understanding a perspective of what a ramen should be and make my own I the mean, foundation of ramen yes you need yes. to be muscle memory with that yes okay. so i i need to understand how it looks like how is it served what are people looking for when they eat ramen okay. the japanese one i mean there is no way a non japanese can make a ramen and call it authentic the japanese won't have that right 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 i mean if yeah. you are a japanese you make something that does not look like the whole years of ramen history in japan yep. not like ramen but he call it ramen the japanese would call it authentic ramen that's how nationalistic nationalistic okay. they are okay. but i don't care because my customers are, yeah right yeah. i mean you are bringing something from their from their culture mm. you're trying to introduce it to Singapore. Yes. Right? Yes, to yes. I mean wherever is in in Southeast Because once you told me that you wanted to be Singapore's halalizer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that term? <laughs> halalizer. Okay. So for the benefit of our listeners or viewers, right? Come on last time he he came out with this term called halalizer. So he wants to go all over the world, mm. find non-halal food, bring it to Singapore, and then halalize it. Mm. Create a business out of this. So I don't know what else that you have in store. Apart from ramen, I mean because ramen, I know uh, fundamentally they are usually their soup is using pork broth, yes, right? Uh, uh, I have very limited knowledge yeah. about this. Uh, I mean for the halal ones in in Japan, they usually use like seafood broth, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So so there was something very interesting. Mm-hmm. So do you have any other things that you intend to halalize? Um, I would I would start with food that I like. So okay. maybe you know, uh, for the past I don't know two three years now. Ever since I do this, Matt Bros, I've been eating tons of chicken. I'm sick of that. Okay. I want I want red meat now. I mean, chicken cooked in many different forms. Yeah. So I mean, now I want red meat. If you give me a human being, I would eat. I mean, please. <laughs> I, I, but I I want red meat for now. You know, mm. I want to I want to venture out into red meat because, um, I've always been a fan of. Of uh, meat, so maybe you know I don't know. I've always looked into. I've always loved tacos. Uh, so maybe tacos as in Mexican tacos, right? You're talking about yeah, basically uh, yeah, Mexican tacos or um, I know burritos, those kind is mm, mm, meat base. Okay. But, you know, Once maybe once the the COVID is lifted, they might have that already, right? They have, Singapore? they have. But the thing is, when I started out this Mad Bros, there's already ramen store. True. Yeah. True. But it's it's not that uh, there's a lot, mm-hmm. and it's not to me honestly lah. I mean, it's not as nice. So there is competition right now, right? For yeah. halal ramen in Singapore. Oh, now slowly, slowly, yes. There's a few big names that are coming up. Some of them are one of them actually are straight from Japan. The, oh, okay. The owner actually tried my food. So he came to your store when I first came. Up, when I first tried, we so a little bit of history for Matt Bros SG. Uh, we first started selling our ramen at Gardens by the Bay. Yeah, I remember for, that at a Sakura event. Yeah. So. Naturally, it's a Sakura event. Uh, Japanese, being uh, I don't know, they they come Singapore, they go to uh, Gardens by the Bay to yeah. see a flower that they see back at home. Yep, yep. So uh, he came by and then he tried and then he gave some brutal, uh, quite brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, tips. that wasn't your best work, man. Oh, But yeah, yes, I mean, yes. But you know, for me, it's um, I, I thick skin, lah. You know. Down there, the, some of the vendors were chefs. So, oh, is it? Yes. Okay. And the executive chefs, most of them from the Japanese restaurants, are uh, they're actually Japanese. So, ah, um, I see. I would ask them. I would go to them, eat, tell me, tell me, and then most of them actually said, uh, they are kind of they don't really know um, Muslims much okay. or the term halal mm-hmm. so the first thing that they said oh mirin sake at sake ah so they say okay. that in my tare a tare is like a, a sauce the flavoring that you add to your to your ramen okay to the broth yeah so they say 
for the tare you know you need mirin you need uh you have to put a little bit of sake to give it the seasoning the sake sweet. they are called the japanese drink yeah, right it's okay. a japanese drink and mirin is like um I, I, it's like a it's a rice wine okay it's, it's yeah a, yeah i've heard of wine. it before yeah. cooking wine yeah mirin in japanese cooking wine so uh these are the things they say and then i say okay do you know any alternative and then they're like oh because they are japanese and uh they somehow their their english not like good line yeah, yeah, yeah. so it was they had to take out their phone google translate and ah okay okay bit okay hard, but okay. you know i managed you got the message lah i got the message but then i also i also let them know that you know it has to be halal okay they understood the alcohol. parameters of halal oh, when i say al- no alcohol oh very hard very hard very hard <laughs> how like that true true oh, uh, then after that i say hongkan very hard so i have to start all over again but then um along within that that stretch of event i actually met a lot of people who are actually uh they actually liked it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no but because i was, was there i helped you to serve some of your customers mm-hmm. as well bro some of them came back actually i served a few uh one or two two individuals right who came back for a second serving i don't know where they were buying for their friends or what uh. but they already finished the first serving and then they came back so uh. that was a testament to the taste right uh. i mean actually i i I didn't understand why they came back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, honestly, right? Okay, I I, I told uh, our friend Matt who I came uh, with. Then to now, it's like you went from zero to hundred. It was literally almost zero, but now your food, mm. it tastes beautiful, bro. It's just awesome, Thank right? You, and and even you. my wife, mm-hmm. it's a big fan of your ramen. Oh. Yeah, uh, I don't know whether because you hit the jackpot with the Malay taste buds. Mm-hmm. But I know a lot of my Malay friends, right? Malay uh, mm-hmm. friends in the Malay community, who are raving about your ramen. Oh, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there are people who are not mutually connected to both of us who speak about your ramen. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, yeah. And then after that, I'll be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you personally, and then I, I say, mm-hmm. give me your feedback. Yeah, I'll probably forward it to you. But generally, they are mostly really positive comments. Like you know, mm. so. Uh, I was I was so happy for you because you you literally went from I would say zero to hundred within a span of like less than a year, mm. and yeah, it speaks a lot about the dedication you put in. Now I want to talk about the fact that your first foray into FNB business wasn't at Hawker Center. It was at the Gilang Bazaar, right? That was the uh. first time you actually set up a. I'll say a pop up. This right? no lah. Actually, this one was that one would be the second one. Oh, the the first one was Gardens by the Bay. What? No, bro. Is it? Yeah, Gardens by the Bay. I think you started off first, with no. uh, Gilang, no? No, Gardens by the Bay okay. first. Then um, I mean, my store was actually already in the pipelines to happen, so I needed some money. Okay. So I figured. Bazaar Ramadan yeah, yeah, it was is. was supposed could actually help me supplement the amount or uh, the capital uh, yeah, that I had. Correct. What's the experience like? Gilang Bazaar, thirty days. Oh, I mean, I was with you all thirty days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear from you, bro. Oh, bro, let's just say uh, in business, uh, there will always be failures. Uh. <laughs> But uh, it's what you do with this failure. Was that your most painful one? Um. So far in the Matt Bros journey, oh, uh, in the Matt Bros journey, yes, yeah. yes, yes. But I vow to myself never to repeat it again. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't be, I won't be seeing you anymore. Huh? No, no, no. You will be seeing me, seeing me, but I will be more prepared with a different strategy and everything. Yes, 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 yes. yes but yes. you created a bit of wave, you know, yes. with your food. But um, I would say, honestly. I've done business a, li- a bit longer than you. Mm. I wasn't able to put uh, a reason to why it didn't like it didn't uh, reach the expectation that we had. Like I had a high expectation for mm. for what you're putting out. It was mm. it was good food, bro. Right? It was a good concept. It was good food. It went viral for a bit, mm. right? But uh, yeah, I couldn't put uh, why it didn't take off as 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 that one. But I don't know. I mean, it's God blessing when you shifted to Tanjung Pagar. You mm. probably hit the correct demographic there, right? Mm. I think probably at that point in time they were not ready for good Japanese food yet. 
Yeah, they weren't they weren't ready for a good bukake. I can say for sure. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> uh, just a, a, a disclaimer. Uh, bukake was the catch was the lah. catchphrase for his food when he was at the Gelang Bazaar. But bukake has actually a proper technical meaning, right? Yes. Not the derogatory meaning that we we are uh, accustomed to. It's a, it's can you explain? It's a actually a, it's uh in English. Verb. It's a normal verb where okay. the the action of splashing on something. So bukaki is splashing. Yes. It, so when I when I say it's when I call it back then I call it chizu bukake. You're supposed to splash the cheese on the food. So um, somehow in Southeast Asia, at least in Singapore, I can yeah. say for sure, uh, the 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 citizen or the people here. They are more familiar with a different kind of bukake. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my idea was, yes, of course, I knew that it could, it would create a controversy. But my idea was actually to call, uh, educate people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's due to lack of education that mm. people misconstrue that word. Yes, the technical term of that yes. word, right? So uh, of course, I I get a lot of in Malaysia kena kecam. Yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but it's okay. I mean, uh, to me, um, any publicity is. Good but you didn't get any yeah. like so called um, hit straight up face to face from. No your, man. No right. And I tell you all the machi. It's like, eh, hey, apa ni buka <laughs> I nak okay, buka this, Okay, like, this this machi is the one that that eh. truly don't know the meaning of buka yeah, right? But they yeah. liked it. I tell okay. you, my mother. Why people always look at us and laugh? Ah? <laughs> and then come here take picture. Ah? <laughs> Kenapa? Me and my cousin like oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my mother, God bless her soul. Uh, I mean, she's still alive. She's, <laughs> I mean, she's she's an amazing woman. So I'm pretty sure she's still right now until to this day. She doesn't know. But um, idea was met. It's just that the the fad catches on. You got that. So called virality quite early. I was so optimistic for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe because um, it wasn't quite early. I think it was maybe. Th- maybe it th- was the beginning of the second, second week. week. Yeah, second week. beginning of the second. But week. you have to understand, ah, because Ramadan, you you're only operating only three weeks. Ah, uh, four weeks. Yep. So. If for the second week you're done, you need three weeks to actually make up for the first two weeks. True. Two true. weeks. Yeah. Correct. So, correct. Um, it's a lot of hard work, lah. But uh, we we just we just couldn't get uh, the the correct amount of uh, traction. Yeah. Enough to to actually uh, to be profitable. Lah. True. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was my mistake. Maybe. If let's say I were to have a few more selling uh, a few more pop-ups before Ramadan prior to Ramadan, Correct. Uh, create the noise, right? Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Noise. Correct. I think you came just suddenly, yeah. right? You just splattered on people's face, yeah. But man. and people no there was a bit of standard, bro. There, there was a bit of skepticism there, yes, right? Yes. I yeah. think if you had a bit gain a bit of traction, probably mm. two three months before, yeah. pop up here, pop up there, mm. right? They'll be better. I mean, uh. Uh, to this day, actually, people are still asking for bukake, man. Oh, is it? Yeah, man. They are asking for more and more bukake. And I would love to give it to them, but it's not on the menu. Why aren't you putting it? Uh, let's just say operationally. Look, look at him. He's like, he, just, he just can't stand <laughs> it, man. It's so funny. So, <laughs> But, uh, uh, I mean, operationally, it is uh, not economical for me to do it okay of course I, i'm planning to do it just uh maybe once uh this this uh pandemic is it's we're not out of the woods yeah to be honest yep. right i mean we are all it stabilizes a, an, a bit an more edu- la, right? educated guest would say would, would tell a you year that, or two yeah. huh uh, what as in the, the duration for this yeah i mean we yeah. don't know yet how whether yeah, yeah, when yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be safe from everything true I mean. so um for now, I'm just you know slowly biding my time, looking at it, looking for an opportunity. Okay. So maybe you know we'll we'll come up with uh, another place to to sell. Yeah, I think you should come yeah, up yeah. in somewhere in the east side, okay. because I feel that the east side 
there's a good amount of Malay community within the East. That's for sure. That's yeah. for sure. So, uh, because you see, in, in in Tampines Hub, there's a lot of um, halal food, a variety of it, right? I, I'm not saying that you should open there, mm-hmm. but I'm just mm-hmm. putting as a point of uh, comparison, right? So there are a lot, and I was food panda as well. You don't work in the Far East, right? You don't I work in the East Side. A few times, and they have lucrative business there. Mm. So I think you should consider. Yeah, maybe yes. Definitely, I would open up on all four corners of the island. Eventually, that is that is my aim. Uh, by my own metrics, like that is how Matt Bros would want to move forward. Yeah. So um, we are just we are just actually slowly planning. Again, I would say we want to grow organically. Okay. We don't really we are not really really looking for the exponential burst where you know suddenly I'm so popular and then yeah. suddenly when the yeah. fat dies, you know I yeah. I want it to be like you know you want Japanese ramen, Matt Bros. Yeah, yeah. So build up over time. You want your reputation yes. to be built up over time. Yes. So uh, we we are not really rushing into things. Um, but of course, you know it's 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 not an easy ride. Uh, it's been a hell of a ride, uh, but I'm enjoying it so far. Is it tiring? Oh, definitely. I mean, if I say I'm tired, yeah. so for now, the only that the the person that have been helping me from day one till now is actually my mother. Uh, yep, yep. So you know, and I think uh, everyone who already knows Bent Bros or have seen the articles that we were featured on would know that actually I'm running the store, the business with my mother. So um, if I am tired, <laughs> yeah. my mother, yeah, 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 yeah. she's in the late 60s, uh, going on to 70s soon in a few years time, would be more tired than I am. But she is still coming to the stall every morning to sell ramen to you people. Uh, she, our, she truly yeah. believes in this um, project, right? That's arguable. Oh, okay. She's doing it because she, loves she supports you. me. Uh, yeah. Loves me. Yeah. Yes. Um, and um, let's just say she had her fair share of arguments on the business. Uh, her fair share of criticism but again like i like i said i think a few times before not in this article uh, not in this podcast but uh, she has been the biggest supporter but also the biggest, biggest critic. critic yeah, yeah I, mean, i mean i mean i mean i mean i think family support is truly important uh, right yeah, and yeah, i yeah. think you have as much as you are a very independent yeah. person um the support i've been getting even from your dad Mm. Right, who has mm. helped you, but your mom, I think, is tremendous, bro. Yeah, man. Right, yeah, even man. for myself, I mean, the whole family will always pitch in, without, without even requiring for anything else in return. Mm. Yeah, it's very unconditional. I think, yeah. But if let's say somebody right now comes to you like, ah, bang Kamal, bang Kamal, uh, should I be a hawker? I have passion for FNB. I want to open a store, but. Um, I don't want to open maybe at like Arab Street or I don't want to open at like a shopping mall. Is being a hawker a good start? Mm, uh, being a hawker a good start? Um, I think can that hawk being a hawker is one way to start. One way. It's how you want to do it. Uh. If you if you say I mean if it's a person who comes up to me and say they are always passionate about food, yeah, being hawker is also about food. Yeah, do it. If you because you can do hawker, you can do uh, because hawker there's a commitment you have you can you have to commit on a physical store, brick and mortar store. Yeah. Or if you want, you can. There's so many outlets you can actually home base. Actually, True. And yeah. even now actually that question has been asked. To, uh, has been posed to me. Um, sh- what should I do? I I think I have this idea. Do it lah. But of course, you need to calculate. Th- you need to calculate. Um, would it be good if you actually have a stall, or would you want to have a test bed for your sh- for your for your product? You can do it at home. You can actually because there's so many people home based business. True, but it has become too saturated right now, right? Uh, 
we have a population with an insatiable hunger for food. True, especially our community. Yes. Right. So, try. I mean, uh, in you FNB, feel the market is always there. Yes, I mean FNB. Uh, it's it's a very um, how do you say a lot of turnover. You can open up one uh, with this month and then a few next month. Next month it's closed. So, give it a try. If it's good carry on if it's not move on to another business i mean that's that's how it is yeah you know so if you have a good idea try it if it's good it catches on carry on you know if it doesn't then lay back i mean for home-based business it's there's not much barrier to entry yeah and there's not much uh you can if it doesn't work out you can just leave so i mean economics right, i mean right, right. it's it's very it's very highly competitive right so you can and you major in economics right oh so yes, you, yes you are able to not a good student <laughs> but <laughs> i mean <laughs> we go both each other's partner in uh, crime bro yeah right yeah we try our best yeah bringing to that right we were a lot filled up with a lot of um the sport that we truly mm, love mm, right mm, 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 just want to mm. draw you back a bit to one of the most i don't know is it still one of your great passions martial art uh i think uh you realize uh, as you grow older right, you, it can be very painful <laughs> 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 but i mean you are transitioning from martial art to cycling now oh not only cycling right i, I mean to i've i was i mean i i did cycling back then i liked it but um i had an injury and then i stopped and i only picked it up lately because of covid the cycling yeah and you just pop your shoulder again right and because of now, cycling right now the same thing happened but this time is dislocated okay so uh yeah along the way i did pick up golf so now i'm just juggling within ah, so you the intensity of sport is decreasing y- yes but I, I i am still very competitive i this i think this this competitive spirit has always been inbuilt in me like ever since i was young i mean i have been uh, in sports competitive sports at an early age in life and then it it has been like uh, you know you cannot sit still so my day would go i mean even on a w- off on a, on an off day yeah i would be up 6 a.m to carry on. Okay. I, i don't like to sleep in i mean uh that's one thing good um, i i've adjusted my life um i go to bed early mm-hmm. because you know you you need your rest you just so need you like your rest yeah to start your day early I definitely like basically this, just yeah. to achieve everything yeah. you set up for the day. Yes, and I then mean, retire. It's like for the night. I l- have this feeling of people are sleeping. I'm slogging, but uh, I'll be out. You know, I didn't have I didn't have that mentality earlier uh, <laughs> when I was younger. Huh? But now I feel like, oh, when it's eleven, right? Or it's like I accidentally sleep till late. Mm. I feel like shit a bit. Really? Like you know, like some like um mm, 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 mm. oh everybody's already like three hours yes. four hours into the yes. hustle, you know, and yes. suddenly you're like you woke up late. Yeah. You know, you have you feel the sense of loss a bit. Yes, I do feel that. I do feel that. But you, you, you were actually a high performing athlete in Silat uh, early on in your days. Uh, okay, <laughs> guys. So the reason <laughs> I'm saying this is because we both came from the same Silat club, yeah. and at a very young age, uh, Kama was actually a mentor to myself back in our clubs, <laughs> and um, yeah. he was actually a very d- tremendous athlete, a Silat athlete, tremendous one. Um, he was there mm-hmm. in the national setup, training with, at that point of time, amongst the best, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. managed to train with the elite fighters, right? Yes, People yes, like yes. Uh, uh, the late Abang Kadi. Oh, that's my idol. Yes, right, right. Yes. And then you managed to train with like Abang Zul. Yes, definitely. Right. The now he's like I think he owns the ring. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I don't know whether he's the owner, but he's always in. He's always the face of the ring. Probably because I'm friends with him uh, on mm. Facebook, and then. Our former coach, Abang Azmi. Mm. How is he like, bro? I mean, the setup of the Silat scene. Maybe you're not too familiar right now. I'm also not too familiar, mm. right? Mm. But we can see from the statistic of the performance, the achievements has not been comparable to mm. back then. Mm. 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 How was it training back then with really the top top athletes in our scene? Like they were not just top athletes in Silat alone, in the region, right? They were among the top athletes. They mm. were winning medals. They were, they were making Singapore proud and all. And how how was it training with them? The intensity did did it create a version of you now? Um, 
I was very blessed because at that point we had amazing coaches, uh, and they were not only good, they were tough on us. Okay. And I think I believe some of my batchmates, uh, I mean, wasted because I left before I could fly in Silat, but uh, they were very supportive. They were actually very, very, very tough. So I mean, back then. Um, the training I remembered the the head coach back then he said it's okay if you faint I've got oxygen tank inside behind oh, that wow. so it's okay don't worry train and train until you want to faint carry on because I'm train I'm I'm special first aider yeah. I'm a trained first okay. aider I've got an oxygen so tank. you got no excuse lah no excuse no excuse and it was really tough you know and I mean I was a kid back then and all I wanted to do was just kick the pad as hard as I can. Yeah. So uh, I was actually yeah, it was it was I got so much anger back then I don't know why. Yeah. So Angsty yeah. Kid. Yeah. Angsty teen. Yeah, yeah man, yeah, yeah man. So yeah, all I did was just train. It was it was it was very competitive because you will not be able to they would tell you off hey, you're not good enough. You got to train harder in your face. Yes, why not? Although you were performing yes. alright, and they would say, "Hey, your breathing is like a cow. Ooh. Got to work on your stamina." Nasty words. Nasty words. But then, at that point, I mean, it's okay. I I feel like that actually pushes me further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, nowadays when you when you when I train kids, whenever I have time. Yeah, because you're a coach I, now, right? Yeah, yeah. When, yeah you're coaching so, now. So whenever I have time, I train them. It's it's. It's difficult because uh, that kind of that kind of technique or method would not work in in the post millennial for the post millennial the generation yeah, yeah. I don't know what they're called yeah. I just yeah. know that they are the the younger ones. Yeah. So uh, it actually shaped how I am now. Um, I never like to quit. So. Yeah. It, but the thing is right the reason why i never like to quit is because i did quit once and i quit silat once and you paid the price for it i paid the price because i see all my batchmates going to sea games and and you could have been yes yes world um, champ sea games and all i remember when i gave the letter to my coach back then um i love him uh, i'm not sure if anyone knows he's uh, abang hidayat mm. husni uh, he said you just had to you have to hold on for a while you can yep and i was being a child i i rajo i forget I, and i now i don't even know why i'm rajo with 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 i yeah. don't know with him i don't think it was with him for whatever reason like just with the situation at the moment yes so i left and then he just said you just have to hold you got so much potential kamal yeah. i still remember it was in the office second floor yeah but then i said never mind labang it's okay and then yeah i see them you know i see all my batchmates were flying it's like oh man yeah yeah because in mm. your class your weight mm. class mm. you were among the the top three right i don't know lah i yeah, mean yeah, yeah. i i know i mean you're, you're being humble no but la, you i are, i saw you during that period where before you quit and bro you you were fighting in matches that people wanted to watch you and um if people know saifula saifudin mm. you know you were giving them tough fights beautiful fights and one thing i love about the way you fight it's you fight you fight beautiful mm. right it's not for the sake okay. of winning there was an art to the way you fight i mean which i feel that's a bit lacking throughout in silat right now but it's just my opinion yeah yeah i i i don't know i haven't been following um but i do know again silat was the only thing that i quit in life and i vowed again to never to do it never to do it again you can only make one mistake so the mistake you made yeah. is creating you this yeah don't quit man yeah. don't quit i mean to be honest uh my very good friend because i was failing my uni yeah okay so my very good friend went to a point he changed his handphone uh, my contact name on his handphone to delusional because i told him i will not quit because he keeps saying why you're wasting money just quit and do a different program no and i'm not going to quit so uh actually it was uh, i i told i would i told myself it's okay just keep doing keep doing keep doing 
eventually alhamdulillah i passed uh, <laughs> yeah. graduated yeah, dude, that was that was quite a journey though yeah no but yeah. you did enjoy your life in uni right yeah of you course, participate yeah. in quite a lot of things like community work sports yeah. and also you did judo as well oh in, yes, in sim yeah. right yes, yes yeah yeah, yeah it was uh, i was quite uh surprised you actually won medals also for the school right in judo oh did you yeah 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 oh yeah, yeah. i was talking you a bit so i saw a picture of uh you yeah. some of the sim silat guys they were actually supporting you at the competition oh is it yeah yeah, yeah. I, people I, like um i don't know i think isk uh buck uh yeah probably probably yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean um uh, good thing about judo competition is unlike silana is for they go by belt gradings so if you're a, a fresh in silat or fr- rather fresh in judo you will meet people who are fresh in judo ah okay so they um, match you up probably yeah okay. so i was back then i was a yellow belt uh so i met other yellow belts who could who have been in, in the sport you know, in judo no more than i do no longer than i but do but how's the grading so. done i mean you can so of course like can be fun. people right yeah uh, but um it's the coaches uh prerogative okay. lah okay. they want to okay. promote they promote okay. but then you know there's a certain Singapore, amount of integrity as well yes lah, of right? course the i mean uh, japanese once again yeah yes right? yes so uh i was lucky enough to to co- compete in that that competition i only lost to a guy who who has been in the sport for probably i t- i think he told me for four years he just he haven't gone for grading Oh okay. Yeah. So you may be experienced, <laughs> but if you don't go for grading, you'll stuck at the belt. Uh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, he was he was technically wiser, he's taller, so he's lanky. But yeah, I was I I lost technically lah. I mean, I was just using brute force. Yeah. Uh and I mean, even with my silat experience, it didn't help lah. It was a different ball game. Oh yes, definitely. But I think um, both sport is beautiful in its own right. I mean, if you want to have your kids try it out, or if you yourself want, are you a big advocate for kids doing martial arts? Early yes, age? I'm a very big advocate. In fact, uh, martial arts or actually any kind of sport, if they start young, it helps with the psychomotor, and you know, it's it's This always discipline, good. right? Yes, it's yeah. not only just discipline; it's the developmental of the kid. Okay. So uh, the 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 process actually expedite. It helps them. Uh, how do you say the relevant characteristics yes. that they need? Yeah, because when right. they're moving, ask them to move, and they manage to move, it actually works their brain. So I don't know. Maybe they will become geniuses. You wouldn't know, man. It's yeah, because there was this billionaire. He actually said that I don't know whether it's true, but he said this in a in a forum. He said seventy percent of other billionaires. Have either military or, uh, sorry, martial art background. Mm, Because I mean, martial arts, uh, according to him, statistically, right, yeah. it promotes a lot of um, discipline. It's one of the better ways to promote discipline. Yes. Uh, I mean, amongst the sports that people do. Yes. Yeah, martial art. Which I I would say it actually also shaped me. And thanks to you, I actually managed to. Uh, discipline myself a lot with regards to the sports, and then eventually it transcends towards my life, my daily life. But I want to take one more topic before we we, we go off, right? It's a mm. uh, a bit more lighthearted. I want to yeah. talk more about you're quite a unorthodox traveler, mm-hmm. right? So you've been to quite um, places that people do not go. You are what mm. you call a traveler, but not a tourist, right? What's the craziest places that you've been to? Can I say it on there? <laughs> uh, you you can say you you can say, but um, let's try not indulge them with um, Details, whatever la. you did that may okay, be so, compromising to you. So um, let me choose a place. I guess the 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 until now, like actually, I don't have to guess. Actually, I know. Uh, so way before I had the idea, a friend of mine, a, a fellow ex schoolmate of mine, uh, a patrician lah. So I was from St. Pat's. So uh, this patrician came up to me. Hey, dude, there's this place, man. We should go, brah. <laughs> And then you know we were just uh, 
we were just smoking and then you know he was showing all these pictures and it's like bro we should go man this place is amazing so okay lah let's go ah so i told him um, back then i was uh, comfortably employed so i can just sky scanner anytime you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean then uh, i say let me book a slot for my leave I'll take three weeks. You just choose whichever date because I like to take three weeks leave. Okay. I'm blessed at that time. I can take three weeks leave at one shot. Okay. So uh, my my holidays would be that long. So um, I took leave and I say, okay, this is my my leave. Let's take it. Let's make this trip happen. Yep. And then the fucker prank. <laughs> so I'm okay. For me, it's. I mean, I told him. Okay, dude. I have this. If you cannot make it, it's okay. With or without you, I'll go. Because for so me, if he's watching, he knows. Yeah, probably, man. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. You know who okay. you are. Okay. So, uh, for me, I don't like to wait for people. Okay. It, it's never good. I, I, I saw this. I saw this with my classmates last time when I was in poly. Yeah. Mm. There's a lot of instances where uh, I go to a lecture and then I see some friends and it's like, hey, why never go in? Oh, I'm waiting for my friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Waiting yeah. for your friend and you miss lecture. Eh. Yeah, yeah. Stupid Why? excuse. Stupid excuse. So uh, for me, I don't like to wait. If I say I'm going here this time, if you're not there, I'm just gonna go. You can catch up. I'm not gonna miss anything for you, man. Yeah. I mean, people might say it's selfish. Where's it's unfair where's, to you? Yeah, well, it's unfair because yeah. you are you are you are the one who keeps me waiting. Is the one yeah. selfish. Yeah. So I told him, if you cannot make it, it's okay. I'll okay. do. I go myself. I don't mind going alone. I like solo travel. There's no. I don't have to accommodate to anyone. Yep. So uh, I booked the plane ticket to India. Okay. Amazing. So my plan was to just hike around uh, the northern area. It was just a so you book to Delhi. I booked to Delhi. Alright. So I booked to Delhi, and then again we had a conversation at Simpang, and it's like, "Hey, bro, why are you so going, ah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I actually booked uh, a trip to Delhi. Yeah. Kamal booked a trip to Delhi, and then we were going to the same province, but the different cities. No, actually, right? No, it wasn't. You no. were going to further up north. Okay. I was going to uh, a 16-hour drive away from where you were going. Yeah, same province, but was this? Same. I don't Jammu think. Kashmir, no. right? We are no. going. Oh no. I I was planning to go to Himachal Pradesh. All right. You were going to Jammu Kashmir. You okay. were going to uh, Jammu Kashmir. Okay. So, yeah, we were talking, and then after that, you gave me your itinerary, and then I was like, "Hey, I'm traveling alone, man." <laughs> and somehow you were traveling on the same day. Yeah, I was yeah, traveling yeah. on the same day. Yeah, yeah, we were, we were. So my as well, I'm like you, kata alang kepalang kan? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, ah. I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, it's, it wasn't daylight robbery. The flight tickets back then, so. So you had the first part of the holiday with me, and then the second part of it was solo, yeah, right? Yeah. So the first part of the holiday, we just did a three day two night ride. Oh, we riding like what ten yeah. hours a day? Actually, yesterday I was browsing my Instagram, and then I I followed this hashtag, uh, Solang Valley or something. Okay. Where again, peop- uh, videos on the mountainous areas, and then there's this rider on the same bike that we had. Yeah. Riding around, along the ridges. Ah, oh, I miss that man. You know, recently I saw a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. He cycled to Pangong Lake, bro. Oh, crazy! And I thought what we did was awesome. What he was doing, oh, it must But be crazy. You have to understand, it's a different experience. It depends on what kind of experience you are looking for. I mean, from the physical aspect. Physical aspect, crazy, yeah. yeah, man. But I mean, maybe because he doesn't have a bike license. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe because he wanted. To, he had a longer time frame, yeah, and yeah. he he wanted because when you cycle, it's longer, and then you can really, really, how do you say, assimilate, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. assimilate the surroundings. Yeah, but uh, of course, there's a drawback, lah. Of course, there's you, you, there's a lot of things you need to consider. If you fall sick, how? True, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're yeah, in yeah. the middle of nowhere. Yeah. At right. least, uh, was he alone? Ah, uh, uh, I'm not sure. I think maybe two of them. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So even if he falls sick, his buddy was there. His buddy want to cycle and look for help. Bro, we had a buddy who was sick. Bro. Yes, of course. I- imagine <laughs> if he wasn't on a motorbike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. these are the things that you need to to consider, lah. Of course, yeah. again, being gung ho is very important, lah. You yeah. just, uh, I mean, I I've always not pride myself. I've always tell myself, you know, sometimes 
don't don't bother about what people say. The, there will always be naysayers. Yeah. They will say cannot do it. So hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this I I try myself. I try my best. Even if they're good friends. Yeah. I would have to shut them out for yeah. a while. It's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will just prove to you that I can do it. Then, yeah. yeah. So so the first part of it was quite fun. I mean, uh, you managed to conquer the kadung lah. Right, we, yeah, 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 we, we made a video yeah, about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and then uh, we went back down. We went to Pangong Lake. It was, it was quite a. Uh, the place was high altitude, so it was very low in oxygen. That was one of the things that that, that 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 we had to overcome at the start. But the second leg of it, bro, I wasn't there. Describe to me how was it? Uh, Your own second half of the oh India trip. So where do you go? We went to okay. So for the benefit of people, we went to Leh, Ladakh, and then we. Uh, three of us went back to Singapore and Kamal continued with his pilgrimage in India. Mm. The second half, where was it? It was actually uh, to this place called Manali. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you took a there. bus. Tell me about the bus ride, bro. Oh. Raba, babe. So, it's... Uh, the bus cannot travel more than probably... Uh, 30 km or maybe 40 kilometers per hour because of the road because of the road the okay. terrain so when they travel uh, and of course when you when i tell you that it's because it's rocky so it's very very bumpy right yeah so i knew on on, on the get go that you know definitely if i don't take any pills i would get uh kasik you know okay the motion, motion sickness, sickness yes. pill right yeah so i took that a few just to knock myself out yeah so i knocked myself out The only thing that woke me up was the bump. The bump was so great, right? That I, I was sleeping by the window. Yeah. And I knocked my head on the window because it was so hard. Okay. That was like, and then it was cold. So I, I thought it was up in the mountains. And then when I bought the bus, it was actually, uh, it was maybe it was quite warm. Okay. I, I can wear my sandals, just yeah. my sandals. Yeah. Without no socks. Yeah. Without any socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went, I I wore and then I, I wore my sandals. I slept. I sit sat down. It was it was a, a night right night drive lah. So yeah. by 12 a.m. when we 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 stopped right, I was actually freezing. I couldn't feel my feet. Wait, this wasn't inside the bus. This it was, was inside the bus. Still it was inside the bus. But man. you said it was warm. It was warm outside when it, there was sun. Okay. But by maybe 10 a, 10 p.m. We're not prepared. No man, okay. and the bags, right? All my luggages yeah. was on top of the bus. You know, you know, have you seen like videos on on those the, Indian buses, right? Yeah, they put the bike on top of the bus. Yeah, same. But this one is like so you had no access to it. No, cannot. Okay, so I was with like a uh, a windbreaker at best. No socks. No Slippers. socks. Sandals. Okay, and I was like, eh, eh, ni rabak lah. <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, the bus ride was 7 p.m. It was a six, uh, seven, uh, no the bus ride was 5 p.m. It was a 16 hour ride. 16 hours. 16 hour drive. Wow. Uh, wasn't enjoyable. Do you even during that trip? Does in during that bus ride? Do you do you even manage to get your socks or? No lah, no lah. I mean, you you'll be causing problems for them if you were to yeah ask, la. right? And then I number one, I don't speak Hindi. <laughs> so uh, the thing is, my skin color, I look like an Indian in India. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, would yeah, speak yeah. to me in yeah, Hindi. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, me no Hindi, bro. <laughs> yeah. So um, what was in Manali, bro? Why why did you really want to go there? What did this patrician friend of you sold to you? <laughs> uh, I'm not in. Uh, what was available there? That's all. What was available there? Yeah. Uh, mountains. Okay. Plantations. Uh, a lot of plantations. Okay. Uh, scenic place. Is is it very scenic oh, place? It was so scenic. I think everyone should go. Everyone yeah. should go. I mean, even I think I don't know. Is it Mark Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs said everyone should do a pilgrimage to 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 India? Yeah, people say India changed you. Oh, it definitely did. So okay, <laughs> let me tell you a story. Yeah. Okay. So. One of the reasons why I jumped the gun for this business, right, was actually because in India, when I was at this uh, village called Malana. Okay, this is nearer to Malan. Uh, this is in Manali. Manali. It's just so in Manali, it's like a valley where you take a bus, you can just drop somewhere and then hike up to a village. Okay. 
So um, this this village called Malana. So it was it was maybe an uh, an hour's ride. So it was a was a noob thing that I did. I normally what you can do is you can just uh, put your bag up in the the there's this there's like a village. Uh, how do you say it? a city a town. So you can put your bags in one of the the tour agency's office, have a day pack, and then you can take uh, hike up. Yep. But I didn't. I lugged all my luggages with me. So I had <laughs> one big backpack, and then one day pack, which is as heavy as a backpack okay. uh, somehow. Yeah. And then I had to hike up a mountain. How far? And the ma- the hike uh, wasn't just a normal stroll. You have to literally climb. There's one part or two parts where you have to climb up. Okay. So when I uh, it was quite it's bad. It's climb like. where you require all your limbs, right? Oh You're yes, about? yes. Yeah. Uh, I had to throw my dip back <laughs> up. But yeah, uh, all this was done alone, mind yeah. you. So when I got there, I was tired. I checked in uh, in the one of the guest house. I sat down, just admiring my my. By then, it was a beautiful scene. Yes, it was, it was almost sunset. I think. I oh, think it was okay. almost sunset. So uh, and then this that this Indian dude came. And then he checked in, and then he was like, "I told him, dude, come on, man, join me, man, uh, for a smoke." He said, "Okay, can." And then he sat down. We were talking. We had a blast, you know, just talking, just, just, just lepaking, ah. Yeah. Uh, and then he, I asked him. So because he said something like, "Oh, it's been a while since I had a vacation, man. It's been like I don't know, three, four years." Yeah. Said, oh, okay. Wow, you must have had a very, very bad uh, employer. Dude, I am the employer. <laughs> It's like, oh, oh, okay. But he said in a not not in a bragging kind of way. Nonchalant It's way. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, in in a very like yeah nonchalant way. Like, dude, I am the employer. Like, oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, I've been I've been focusing on my business. And then he started to tell me about what did he do. So, his background is business admin he's yeah. just doing normal business but he has a business in 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 tech it he has a business in bike garage bike he he has a bike motorbike, garage bike. yeah oh, yeah okay. motorbike garage so um i say dude then i ask him i mean how do you have all this training google bro yeah indeed it yeah. is powerful google YouTube, they will teach you anything. I don't know anything about bikes. I just go to Google and YouTube, and now I have a garage. Oh, so that was like you know sometimes in life, uh, you have you need to have this back then. Um, uh, I I did insurance before last time, so back then my manager say you have to have a ha aha moment or whatever lah. Yeah. I don't know. I cannot yeah. have the the eureka moment. The whatever ah. Yeah. Huh? So you have to have this aha moment. So that was a aha moment for me. Mm. It's like mm. whoa. It's deep, man. It was so simple. Simple, right? you know. So, I mean, we are in an in an era where information is readily available. Information, be it correct or wrong, is up to you to yeah. to decipher. Yeah. But it is readily available. Yeah. So there is no way one can sound stupid. <laughs> true. True. Even if they are wrong, yeah, they shouldn't sound stupid. Yes. Yeah. Right? So. Uh, it's just I was like, wow, that is so deep, man. So, you know, I thought it wasn't he, that guy that I met. Yeah, he is like the coolest Indian dude I have ever met in my life. I mean, superficially, he looks cool. No, well. man. No. Oh, he is. He is just cool. I yeah. mean, okay. So, back in the office, yeah. my my boss, he's from Bangalore as well. Yeah. He was like, hey, how was it? I met the coolest guy from Bangalore ever. Yeah, say that to his face. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, uh, he, he, that that guy, his name is Ravi. Yeah, who the one at Manali? Uh, yes, yeah. his name is Ravi. And shout yeah. out to Ravi. Yeah, yeah man. Is. If this is ever on Facebook, I will tag him. <laughs> and Ravi, you changed my life, bro. Oh. I mean, you are friends with him on yes, Facebook. Of course, he's always been. Uh, if I post some traveling, it's like, dude, when are you coming, man? When are you, you know. So uh, I guess probably uh, my next stop would be in 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 in, in India in Bangalore. Have a uh, you know have a chat <laughs> with him. Have a cup of chai. Yeah, yeah they call it chai. Yeah. Tea is chai. Yes. Anyway, Ma, we're gonna wrap up. Yes. But before we wrap up, any plugs for yourself? Plugs. 
plugs plugs no but plug ah no not plug <laughs> plugs for yourself uh, whatever you want with regards to your business with regards to your shop plug yourself i mean uh, i mean promote yourself okay uh, with regards to the business i mean uh, hopefully this will reach uh, uh, 10, 10 people by the first uh, <laughs> <laughs> when it publishes right so um, yeah i mean uh, okay so um, if you ever want to try or oh, you know what Don't ever want to don't wait until you ever want to try Japanese food. Try it, man. Try met uh, try the ramen that we serve at Mad Bros SG. We are located at uh, Block 6 Tanjung Pagar Plaza 0203 Level 2 beside the lift. Tingkat 2 Tepi Tangga. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> It's really Tepi Tangga. What's the uh, Instagram or So on Instagram on Facebook we are Mad Bros SG. You can follow us. Uh, Spell it out, man. M A D B R O S S G. Yep. Matt Bros S G. Uh, we are uh, yeah. We have. If they want to communicate with you, ask you anything. You can what, you DMs? can DM us. Slide into your DMs. You can yes. You can slide in into our DMs. Yep. You can also uh, text us DM us on Facebook. Uh, you can actually call us at nine one nine zero four eight six one. Or if you don't get, you didn't get that, you can just we have our contacts on our Facebook. So nice, no nice. worries at all. It's been a pleasure, brother. Yes, it has we been a pleasure. It was fun, and yeah, I'm truly grateful for you. Yeah, and man. I'm truly happy for where you are right now. Thank you, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for this Assalamualaikum. opportunity. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullah.